Kate Ruggs, the sober dog, and Gemma Girl, the other sober dog, coming at you. Today's video, I'm going to tell you how I got started on Oxycontin and how the addiction to it was miserable. Even Gemma knows. That's why she's saying it in the background. I do not condone any drug use or promote any drug use. This channel is about recovery, but truth, facts, and education about addiction and what it was really like. Let's get right into it. I took painkillers in high school, you know, recreationally a couple times here, there. That was my first experience ever trying, you know, painkillers, opioids, anything like that. And it was fun, you know, for what it was at the time. It was a different high we were searching for. You know, I drank, smoked weed, I tried cocaine, tried ecstasy. So it was a different thing. I enjoyed doing it, you know, at the end of a night to come down on something else. The first time I ever tried Oxycontin, a friend of mine, one of his older brothers got it and we got some from him. Uh, this was an acquaintance of mine and we got an Oxy 80. This would have been around 2003, maybe 2004. We got an Oxy-80 and we split it in half, me and this person. We each took half of it at about 11 a.m. at school. Nothing happened for a little while, you know, maybe an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Then I'm walking by and this is between classes at about the, you know, like whatever break it was around 12.30 or so. And I'm starting to get loopy. And I'm walking by and I see this friend just sitting on a table like this in the hallway. And then he just throws up. Not like excessively to where it attracted everyone's attention, but enough to where white liquid just started coming out of his mouth. And it was because he had a little milk, you know, those little high school milk cartons he was drinking. Um... So I immediately grab him and I'm like, dude, go to the bathroom. And we go to the bathroom and I'm stumbling more when we get there. And both of us are starting to get more and more messed up. Now, if you don't know much about Oxycontin, the strongest one they allow in the United States is an 80 milligram pill. So for the first time taking it to take half of an 80 milligram pill, that's equivalent to eight Vicodin or eight Percocet five milligrams, which is what most people get. Like if you get your wisdom teeth taken out or you get, you know, they don't do it as much anymore. But so imagine getting your wisdom teeth taken out. The doctor gives you those painkillers and you immediately just eat eight of them right away as, you know, a 17 year old. So me and him are in the bathroom. We, we stay in there like 20 minutes, throw up, try to level ourselves off and get the hell out of school because we just knew we couldn't really function. That was my first experience with Oxycontin. I spent the rest of the day half nodding out, half sleeping, half, uh, you know, in another world. A couple weeks later, tried it again. Same, scenario, same type of scenario, not at school this time, but this time there was alcohol involved and I got extremely high. Was high for a solid 12 hours. Fast forward to college. I got hurt a couple times in high school football and in college football, specifically concussions. I got two in high school, two in college, and one outside of football uh, off the field. Now, I get hurt in college, and when I got my last concussion, I like, you know, hyperextended my neck, and I had a ton of neck pain that went along with it. Went to the doctor, did the physical therapy thing for a couple weeks, you know, was BSing with him about that. He gives me painkillers, gives me Percocet. Within six months, the same doctor is now giving me Roxy 30s, which if you don't, you know, that is the same medicine, the same everything as Oxycontin. Um, it's just the 30 milligram generic one. I'm starting to take my prescription, you know, way ahead of, of when it's due. I'm not taking it as prescribed. Now I got these little ones that are very popular and people are snorting them everywhere. I'm taking them with alcohol. It just was a terrible scenario. I, my habit is now a daily habit. The doctor cut me off. He actually closed his practice and moved to a different state 
I can't confirm this, but from what I heard from another person who saw him, he actually moved to Ohio, opened up a practice, and is now in jail because of giving, basically giving anyone prescriptions right away. Now I have a daily habit of Oxycontin. I'm snorting it, I'm buying it on the street, I'm no longer getting it from a prescribed doctor, and I can't really function without it. I didn't know I was a full-blown addict until I went home back to Rochester, New York, where I'm from, after the summer is gonna be my, my senior year of college. In August, my family and a lot of other families we're friends with had a trip to Vegas planned. So I was using a lot of Oxy, you know, pretty much daily at this point and was able to lie, steal, cheat and manipulate enough to get pills every day or something to keep me fine every day. And, uh, you know, still kept an outside facade that everything was good. I got good grades. Um, I worked a little bit at college, you know, um, I had a job on the campus as well, helping um, students with disabilities. So everything looked good on the outside. And because of that, I was able to lie and, and manipulate a lot more to get money daily for oxys. however I did it, from friends or family or paycheck there or whatever. Um, so I come home, we go to Las Vegas, I bring oxys with me to Las Vegas because I wanted to, number one, I wanted to get high there, but I, I thought in the back of my head I might need to have them. So a certain person I'm going with said, I asked him the night before if he wanted me to bring him any, he said no. I, you know, I said, give me money and I'll bring you some. He said no. So we get there and this individual now wants to use it, whatever. Uh, this person I was good friends with, still am. So him using it now, the amount I brought goes half as quick. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't mind. It's, you know, one of my best friends ever. I'm going to, uh, whatever I got, half mine is half his. But now we're on the third day of the trip. I do it. Me and him do it. We're, you know, high as a kite, walking around the Vegas Strip, drinking, partying, blah, blah, blah. Wake up the fourth day and I just have no energy. I'm assuming it's, you know, I'm hungover. I've been drinking for four days straight, using other stuff on vacation in Vegas. You know, I just got to whatever. But I've been on other vacations where I drank every day. So I always knew the cure to that was, you know, water, uh, shower, walk around a little bit, get some food in my stomach, and then start drinking again. But this day, none of that worked, even helped a tiny bit. Even when I started drinking again, I was just, ugh. I couldn't walk anywhere. I didn't, I'm on vacation. I didn't want to walk and see stuff. Normal me is so excited to see different things and see buildings and see the casinos and see the, the tigers and go on the roller coaster over here and no energy, dead to the world. And then I even took ecstasy, which is an upper stimulant. And I loved ecstasy up to this point. And it made me feel a little bit better but I just laid in my bed feeling a little bit better, which is so unlike ecstasy. It's the party drug, the rave drug, the club drug. I knew something was wrong. The next three days, I kind of sucked it out there. I still drank and partied, but I skipped out on a huge party night, which we prepaid, you know, thousands of dollars for at this club with a bunch of us, you know, guys who reserved it for a, a, a party table at this club which is, again, extremely unlike me. But I sucked it out, you know, tried to enjoy the vacation. Before I even got off the plane, we were texting a friend that was back here in Rochester to see if he had anything. He did, and my family pulled in the driveway at our house. I didn't even bring a suitcase inside or anything. I think it was about 10.30 or 11 at night. Got right in my car and left. Went to this individual's house, he had Oxycontin there, grinded one up, snorted the whole thing. Immediately, I'm getting warm all over my body, I get my energy back, I'm happier. Now, the time I put two and two together uh, that whole week of, I'm completely addicted. I have a daily habit that I need this stuff and those last three, four days were withdrawal. Now, a decade later, almost a decade later that I've done a lot of research, that I've been working on stuff like this. I know that entire situation and the whole feeling behind it. I was in full-blown withdrawal, complete withdrawal, 
and doing doing it, you know, which I've done hundreds of times after that date, being in full blown withdrawal and doing another oxy or heroin, you get that warm feeling, you get happy, you get your energy back. You go from basically, you know, pretend you have the flu where let's say your normal energy level is a five and when you have the flu, you're at a zero. When you get to a 10 is like the most energy, you're super revved up, excited, rare and happy, ready to go. When you have the flu, say you're at like, you know, a two. Imagine if you could take, you know, a pill or snort something that immediately brings you to a 10, not just to normal, to a 10. That's what it's like for addicts who are in withdrawal, they're at a zero, and they do their drug, boom, it brings them up to a 10 immediately. The problem is that 10 only stays for a couple hours. You go back down to zero and that zero gets lower and lower and lower. That withdrawal gets worse and worse and worse and you gotta do the drug again to get up and you gotta keep doing it. But that in itself can be addicting. I knew at that point I had a terrible daily habit. I needed this every day. I was very happy that I was able to get high that night and I felt better and I had energy back. But in the back of my mind, what was lingering was you're screwed. You got a daily habit of, you know, if I have the money for it, 200 plus milligrams of Oxycontin a day. So I'm thinking you got to spend a minimum of $40 a day every day to keep this habit up. 